What's in a name? What's in your name and my name? Uh, what does our names mean? In the West, we sometimes haven't got that same thought of names as maybe people in the Middle East or in African countries, where your name means something quite specific, uh, something about you or something that uh, people would like to see about you. Uh, over here, uh, we've got a, a surname, a family name. Maybe maybe someone has traced that name in your family life going back and you can go through your father, grandfather, great-grandfather and loads and loads of generations all the way back. And that's beautiful to see that lineage. And maybe your first name too or your uh, middle name if you have one. What does those names mean? What do they signify? Uh, how personal are they to you? Or maybe you've been named after someone. Uh, how many of us have been named after someone? When I think of some of my own relatives, and how many Roberts went right down a line there. Uh, maybe your family tree is something similar, where people are named after someone else. The Bible, of course, has got lots of people with lots of names, but names that are specific, names that are given, names that mean something. And it's the same today if you were talking to some people, maybe from the Middle East, Africa, Asia, other countries, uh, they would be uh, something about that name that would mean something special to them. One name in the Bible is exceptionally special. Uh, Joseph was spoken to in a dream, and I can read about it in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, and it says, And she will bear a son... And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus was given a specific name. It wasn't just any name, a specific name. It's, it's related in a way to the name Joshua in, in the Old Testament. And here Jesus, jo Joseph's father is told that Jesus is, is to be called that name for he will save his people from their sins. Uh, the name could be Saviour, uh, or God saves, or God will save. The, the whole idea of salvation coming through that very specific name. And one verse I want us to just think about today is in Acts 4. And in Acts 4 we find here Peter and John uh, brought before the authorities. And they're preaching. And in the just previous verse it says, Verse 10, a man had been healed in, in Acts 4, and it says, Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. The miracle that Peter and John had accomplished had been done, of course, through the power of God, but had been done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then it says in verse 11, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which has become the cornerstone. Here very much relating to Jesus as the cornerstone, the one who would bring salvation to the people of Israel and of course beyond to the Gentiles. But in verse 12 it says, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. What a tremendous thought here. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Think of that just for a little moment. And think of what Jesus talked about as well. But no other name under heaven. Think of all other names, other maybe religions, maybe faiths, maybe things that people would attribute to being able to uh, save them, forgive them. Some maybe going down to a river. Others uh, believing in different prophets, different things. And Jesus here has been declared as the name. And his name is special because Jesus is the saviour, the saviour of the world. And when we think what Jesus said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. No other one can bring us salvation. Today, if you're a Christian, praise God. Those lovely names, wonderful counsellor uh, that we call Jesus. All the names that we can, we can think of today. And how we, we praise Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And so many hymns uh, right across the spectrum. Praising Jesus for who he is. That beautiful name. That wonderful name. That name that is above every other name. And that one day every knee will bow before Jesus. Will you think about that today as a Christian? Uh, praising God for the name. What's in a name? Much is in this name. And what if you're not a Christian today? And this verse, and there is salvation in no one else. What do you think about that today? What does Jesus, the name of Jesus, mean to you today? To some people, it's just a swear word. Uh, to others, he's maybe maybe he was a good man, a prophet, maybe a miracle worker. To others, he didn't even exist. Maybe they have an atheistic viewpoint of this man, Jesus. Lots of thoughts about Jesus, but the Bible. Here in Acts chapter 4, declaring in verse 12 that salvation is found in no one else. I just want to encourage you today to turn to that same Jesus for salvation. The one who can, the only one who can forgive your sins. The only one who can welcome you into heaven, open the door for you. For there is salvation found in no one else. May you praise that name today. May you know that name deep in your own heart today. Uh, Jesus, what a lovely name. The lovely name of Jesus. The one who came to seek and to save that which was lost. The one who came to rescue us. Save us from our sins. Save us from a lost eternity. And bring him to himself. So that we, throughout all eternity, may praise the name of Jesus. May that be your joy today. May you find that today, even wherever you are. And again, I'd love to speak to you if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to know more concerning the name of Jesus. Praise God today for that name, the one he sent to save us from our sins. Thank you very much for listening.